Okay. Hello, it's Tess Whitehurst, and as many of you know, I'm the author of a number of books about magical and spiritual living, and today I have my non-spiritual boyfriend, Ted, with me, and that is because I get a lot of questions in email and um, at workshops and even from friends of mine about how do you reconcile your relationship when your partner is not getting what you're into or just isn't into what you're into. And now that we've been together for almost 17 years, we're at a really cool stage with that whole thing. So I thought we could just sort of demonstrate for you some of the conversations that we still debate and we disagree, but we are very respectful. And so do you wanna talk about your, <laughs> your perspective? I just thought, okay, how can she be so smart yet she's always talking about fairies and stuff. <laughs> and I just think that there is, uh, there's been a lot of um, religions and spiritual practices that were created by people. I think it's correct to call it mythology, but when you start to um, tell people that, you know, by using these old practices and these dusty books, it's gonna change your life, that disempowers them to them just embracing uncertainty and that we don't know anything and that we live in a universe that doesn't make sense to us and that's okay. Well I mean I love the mystery and I even think a really cool word for the divine is the way that a lot of Native American tribes use the word the great mystery or the great holy mystery um, instead of God. And I think that that, to me, that is the most inspiring thing is the mystery and embracing the mystery and the wisdom of uncertainty, but also being aware that the way that we frame things, the way that we think of things, the way we expect things, the way we, even the words we use, those really do define our life experience. And so to me that we do have a say, we're part of everything, we're one with everything. So we do, we do have the empowerment to shift conditions in our lives based on our perspective, which I think you agree with that. I do. You will argue, she will argue, um, that science is my religion, kind of. Science is totally fine to always update its uh, facts, you know? Like, the, they will say, you know, we used to think this, but we just discovered this, and so that all changes. Ultimately, what I've learned is to kind of redefine translate what she says into the way I think. Something I've learned over time in our relationship is is to trust myself that if it's powerful for me, if if it's enriching my life to do a certain ritual or to research a certain divinity or uh, spirituality from a certain culture, then that's all that matters. And the more that I'm grounded in, in my trust that this is something that's enriching my life that is important and powerful for me, the less, um, the less I feel like it really matters if Ted agrees or wants to do the rituals with me or um, thinks that they're working. Like it doesn't, it's, it, you know, we, no one's gonna have the same opinion as you or see things the same way you do and that's not the point anyway because it would be boring. It would be boring if everyone in our life had the same exact perspective and way of interpreting the world that we do. And I feel like we learn from each other, we inspire each other, and I think Ted also kind of likes like the candles and the incense and being like, what's up with these crystals here, <laughs> you know? At first I was just like, this is crazy. This is just superstition <laughs> and what is up? When I met her and she was into this stuff, I thought it was a sign that any that maybe she's off the hinges a little bit <laughs> like there could be some serious problems ahead but she's just open to all possibilities which has become really refreshing to me i was raised by really sweet parents one was very christian and one was not religious at all so i got to see both sides but i had my mouth washed off with soap when I said the word God yeah. at some point, it taught me that there was a confusion going on there. And I think that I was, well, I mean, that, it wasn't that bad. I didn't go through what a lot of people go through, but I feel like that's not what goes on with paganism. I feel like they're just like, direct your attention to nature. It's almost a system to respect 
and connect us to nature, which there's probably nothing more important right now. She'll have friends over and the full moon will be out and they'll be in the backyard watching the moon rise or be there in the morning when the sun rises. And I, I just don't feel like there's any sort of judgment going on or any divisions between other people. I feel like she's trying to connect everyone to the nature that we obviously are a part of, but have come up with so many ways to um, separate ourselves from. Yeah, so. yeah, and also what inspires you specifically? Not like what should inspire you or what does the group tell you should inspire you, but what inspires you and that's cool, you know? Yeah. Like science inspires you, that's cool. Yeah. And so yeah, so <laughs> that's an example of our conversations and sometimes they get more heated, but, uh, but, but we okay. always, yeah. It's I okay. guess what I would say is to, if you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't understand what you're doing and you're worried that uh, they're never going to understand this pagan idea, um, I would say just give them time. And because I feel like that's all it took was time for me to see that it's not a threat. The coolest thing Tess says that um, is that only magic is real and that's really hard for anybody to argue with that because that's i think the big thing that is um, missing right now is people feeling like the world is magic and um and it, and it, she's right it's only magic like carl sagan talked about that right that, that that's why there is so much religion is because people are not aware of how magical everything he didn't use the word magical right but how amazing and inspiring nature right. is yeah so i get that too but yeah, and then also I would say, in addition to time, to just remove um, the personal, like taking it personally or feeling threatened from someone else not understanding or appreciating what you're doing. Letting it be, it's not for them. Like, you know, they, if you live with them, they might see that you're doing it, but it's you're not doing it for them. So not to say that everyone is going to be like Ted and totally, you know, find a way to to coexist harmoniously, but that, to me, that's the way to open up, to, to give the opportunity, and always just getting grounded in your, in your own self-esteem about your practices is, is always a healthy way to do it. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and uh, for more discussions about spirituality and, and finding a way to work it into your life in a way that feels authentic to you, you might check out the Good Vibe Tribe. So go to TessWhitehurst.com and click on the Good Vibe Tribe banner at the top. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. <laughs> uh, wasn't this fun?